Good afternoon and welcome to St. Henry High School. We're tonight, W.S. Owison brings you high school volleyball. Two teams ranked in the state, two teams with identical 16-5 and five records. That would be the Fort Laramie Redskins and the St. Henry Redskins as well. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Reese Myring and Company CPA, who's helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Mark Shine and John Dornick here. John, you had a chance to talk to both coaches. Well, what's the mindset coming into this one? Uh, Mark, this is a great matchup here right before the tournament starts. Uh, both teams looking forward to just getting better. Talking to uh, Coach John Rogers from Fort Loramie. He was talking about having his uh, young squad come out here. They've only got two seniors. Um, he says he's just trying to fill their heads up with knowledge as they go along. There's only so much you can give uh, these girls each night, and uh, what they try pick out of it, uh, we're trying. We'll see here today. So, uh, Coach Trish Rosenbeck from uh, um, St. Henry, um, we talked to her, and she's talking about the same thing: playing well, going into the tournament time, coming up here, um, finishing up strong, and uh, playing a good, uh, good team right before they start the tournament play. Interestingly enough, John, we started our coverage this year at the Coldwater Spike Off. These two teams met in the semifinals that day on the very first day of high school volleyball. And now they are matched again on the final day of the regular season of high school volleyball as well here on WOSN. If you're curious about that match, way back on August 20th, St. Henry won in two sets at Coldwater that day. But... Both of these teams are on five-game winning streaks, and in fact, St. Henry has won seven out of their last eight matches as well, and Chloe Gells will serve for them. Chloe Gells' serve is short, and into the net, first point goes to Fort Laramie. Our officials today are R1 today on the platform. And Mr. Dan Cook and Mr. Paul Offenbacher will be our R2 on the floor. This service will be by Skylar Albers. And back-to-back -back miss serves. Looks like both teams might be a little nervous coming in here, and uh, both teams uh, uh, missed a serve the first time. Um, I'm sure after the nerves wear off, this is uh, going to turn into a very good volleyball match. This is Ellie Fullenkamp. St. Henry in the white jerseys today. Fort Laramie in the black ones. Kill attempt was by Summer Hoying, and we're going to get a pull or double contact. And that point will go to Fort Laramie. Katrina Burning will enter as the setter, Jenna Barhorst, will serve. Both setters wear the number seven. That's Lydia Whirling right there. And that point will go to St. Henry. I think uh, talking to Coach Rosenbeck here uh, before the match here, they've run a little bit more out of the middle, but still St. Henry basically an, an outside hitting dominant team. Here's Lydia Whirling. Again, both setters wearing number seven today. Tipped out of the middle. Summer Hoying tipped that one. And he finally free balled over. This is Summer Hoying. Busher will set. Set a little tight that time. And then off a of blocker, the kill will go to Molly Wendell. Lydia Whirling uh, made a nice set back of herself that way, uh, eliminating the double block and they're off the block and out. You were saying that Molly Wendell's playing more with the injury to Lizzie Snyder, although Lizzie may play some today. That's what Coach Rosenbeck told me. Summer Hoying to Whirling. Here's Busher to set again from her libero spot. That shot was by Mia Niekamp, and that will be a point for the home team. Mark, one thing I noticed, uh, even during the JV contest, both of these coaches have... Uh, taught fundamentals very well. Both these teams are in base positions, ready to play defense. That's why the ball's popped up so often. These teams are very young in many respects. They each have just two seniors. Good save in the front row that time by Barhorst. And then the kill attempt. I think that was uh, Katrina Burning put that one away. 4-3 St. Henry. Avery Brandway back in for uh, Hallie Gillott. There's Summer Hoying to serve. Kneecap hits to the back row where it's played by the libero Luffman. And that kill will also go to Katrina Burn, and we're tied at four. Both setters aren't afraid to set the spare, spread the ball around uh, the it is, and uh, the back set there. Got again the single block, right side hitter, opposite hitter, put it away. 
Willing plays it out of the net, but they can't get it over. So three consecutive points have gone the way of Fort Laramie. Hoeing will serve again. She and the Jenna Barhorst each have 41 aces. That leads Coach Rogers' team this year. He can't hit. Barhorst sets. And going for the kill was Victoria Mesher, but the sophomore missed the back row and will go 5 5. Set was just a little bit tall for her, and she got it behind her head and hit it long. The Indy Camp will serve. Tip, good play. Mesher almost got it down. And the net will be Chloe Gells up in the rafters. A little bit of a low ceiling here, John, compared to some places. Not a significantly lower one like Temple Christian, but a little bit lower. Uh, it has a little bit more bounce uh, ability there, Temple Christian being flat. This one's got the rafters all through. And that serve misses. We're tied at six. I always told my kids if you could pass off that kind of ceiling, uh, that made you a better team. Here's Victoria Mesher. She has 37 aces. She and Skylar Albers have 37. They rank third and fourth on the Army team. From behind the 10-foot line, that's Hoying. Whirling sets. And in the kill put away by Molly Wendell. Molly Wendell's uh, playing pretty well here for just a freshman. Both of these teams have made significant progress as the season has gone along, which makes this one of the reasons this match is so interesting. Busher, the left-hander, serves. And then on a kill attempt by Avery Brandaway, that one did not succeed. It's 8-6 home team, and to serve will be Brianna Mangin. No, I'm sorry, Busher's still serving. I thought Mans was headed back to serve. Float serve. Rolling sets. And Glow hit. Glow and Chloe Gells hits. And well, they track it down, and Bush is going to free ball over, but they kept it alive. Barhorse tips it to the middle of the floor and gets a point out of it. You'd never know Molly Wendell was a freshman and hadn't been playing very much this year, uh, stepping in for Lizzie Snyder, but she's played very well so far. Of course, what's, what's Coach Speak say? You're at the uh, 22nd match of the year, so you're not a freshman anymore? Well, that's right. Still, still Coach Speak, but here's Gels. And Gels hits it off the libero, and it gets into the upper wall. 9-7. That's the difference in that play there than in the JV game, Mark. The JV uh, game, the ball never hit the uh, back wall. It just bounced off the ceiling. That one hit the ceiling and bounced around and then came down and hit the back wall. Here's Lauren Tiemann. It's already mentioned the JV game. That took an hour and 10 minutes to play. First set and third set went to St. Henry 25-22. Fort Laramie won the middle set 25-22. And that ball is hit by Albers. And then the kill and the put away by Ellie, Ellie Fallenkamp. And John, watching those two JV teams, they would have beat a lot of RC teams we have seen this year. Exactly. There's, uh, that was a great match. Here's Tima to serve again with her team leading by three. Ace. Chalk that one up for her. It's 11-7. Talked about uh, Fort Laramie being 16 and five. They were 11 and one in the Shelby County Athletic League. Here's team and serve again. And off a blocker, a point for Avery Brandaway to continue with that thought. They lost to Rushi early in the season, but they came back and defeated Rushi this week. And that means each team ended up with 11 and one SCAL records and tie for the league championship. Back set. That's blocked at the net. It looks like it was Summer Hoyne was there. Skyler Albers was as well. Summer Hoying leads uh, the Fort Loramie Redskins in a lot of categories there, so I'm looking forward to seeing what she can do. There's an ace. Chalk that one up. 
I think if you got a double block, as soon as you score a point, you jump up and down like it was you, and then you get credit for it. <laughs> Uh, I think that might still go into the books as a composite block. <laughs> yeah. Just shoved over that time by Tiemann. That was blocked on the effort by Hoing. And then out of the middle, Skyler Albers. But there's a diving play by Manjin, but not good enough to keep it alive. Last four points have gone the way of Fort Laramie, and we're tied at 11. It's been a good service run for Avery Brandy. She scored three of those four points. That's another good serve. Nice pass there. And then Gels, that's tipped. Lydia Whirling yep. uh, passed that ball underhanded clear across court for a great set. Lydia Whirling, 5'9", junior, has 584 assists this year. Her counterpart, Jenna Barhorst, who is a sophomore, has 649. Although Fort Laramie has played five more sets this season than has. There's an ace by Gels. Fort Laramie has played 69 sets to St. Henry 64. So their numbers are actually very similar when you compare assists per set. Here's Gels again. Barhorse sets. Joust at the net. Goes on the St. Henry side. Really is going to set again. And knee camp hits. Point shots block. They track it down and keep it alive, and they get a point out of it. Did that bar horse hit it? That was bar horse. That's what I thought. Talking to Coach Rogers beforehand, she said, or he said, if uh, Fort Loramie had another setter as good as Jenna Barhorse, that Jenna would be a hitter in the front row instead of just setting. Well, she has 60 kills this year. That would be 61 right there. Here's Decamp to hit. Looks like she brocks fairly well, too. Whirling dumps it over, but it's called for. Double contact, we're tied at 13. Biggest lead of the match so far was a four-point lead for St. Henry at 11-7. And that shot is blocked. I think that was Victoria Mesher got that one. Fort Laramie back ahead. Wow, Victoria Mesher uh, leading Fort Laramie in blocks. 39, that's 40. Seven out of the uh, last nine points have gone the way of the Reds, the Fort Laramie Reds, because that makes another one on that ace. Skyler Albers had 37 aces before today, and she is serving very well in the opening set. Deep serve that time, played by Robinette. And we have somebody wearing a black jersey was in the net. You can always tell when the net, there's been a net violation when the net just jumps up and down. This will be Ellie Fullenkamp trying to even it up with her service. Barhorse has to run a long way to play that one and then playing free balls it. Knee camp goes off a blocker and we're tied at 15. I think Mia Knee camp has really come on as the season has progressed, John. I know she had that knee injury a year ago, but she's up to 257 kills this year, and I think every week her play improves. We started seeing her at the beginning of the season, and she has come on strong. She now leads the team in kills, and that attempt, in fact, the ball was put away that time by Maya Antrop. St. Henry is storm back to take a lead, and Coach Rogers will take our first time out. We're going to break also. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. WTLW is in the 18th year of the Sports Report. Every Friday night, you can join Patrick Cameron for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around. And that will go all season long at 10 p.m. on WTLW. One more week of the high school regular season for football, and then we'll get into our playoff scenario the week after that. 16-15 St. Henry, hence the timeout by Coach Rogers, and back to serve will be Ellie Fullerton. 
Boyd sets in the middle. That's Messer's shot is blocked. And we get to say Henry in the net. Jenna Barhorst, the setter for uh, Fort Loramie, was reminding our R2 Paul Offenbacher that there was a net violation there. There's an ace. Chalk that one up. Back and forth we go here in this set. Uh, Mr. Offenbacher, Mr. Cook, two of the best around, uh, John. They are. They are. It's tough to find a better pair on this last Saturday of the regular season of high school volleyball. And yet another ace. Back to back. Jenna Barhorst was leading the uh, Redskins in aces at 41, and I know she's got at least two right here. And this will cause a St. Henry timeout. We're going to break also. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Reese Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Our scoreboard shows the visiting Fort Laramie Redskins with 18. They've scored three consecutive points to 16 for the homestanding Sandra Redskins. Each team has called a timeout. And Whirling will serve, uh, Barhurst will serve again. Knee camp. Got it in. Maya's doing a great job, or Mia's doing a great job uh, on the outside there, putting the ball nice cross-court shot. If you get the ball from that angle inside the 10-foot line, that's a good shot. Here's Lydia Whirling to serve. Bar horse sets. Slide, and that will be a point on the putaway by Katrina Burning. Nice running back set by Jenna Warhorst there. Summer Hoying. You know, when I was an official, I liked it when both setters had the same number. <laughs> Calling a game, I wish they didn't. <laughs> that ball is hit by Ontrop. It's played by Fort Army, and now Hoying will hit it over. And a diving play by Busher, but a point. Three point lead now. For Fort Laramie, that is their largest lead of this set. They were up 15-13 a moment ago. And an ace chalked that one up. They're on a roll. Uh, Mark, being around this game as long as I have been, it's fun watching the coaches' expressions here uh, as the game goes along, ball contacts, anything else, whether ins or outs. Just seeing the expression on their face tells me a lot. It's a service again. Played by Bomber. And then Newcamp's play, the ball is played by Hoying. And this will be hit by Brandewi. And that point goes as well to Fort Laramie. Well, John, I've said multiple times, I think we're going to get our second St. Henry timeout. Uh, coaches are some of my favorite people in the world. You know, they, all they really want to do is work with kids. Uh, they want to enjoy the, the contact and the, the spirit of, of the game, the, the other people I know in the sport. Uh, I, I'd always enjoy being around uh, coaches. Uh, my good friend and mentor, John Barton, from many, many years ago, when I came home from college, he said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to coaching. He said, go to Sears and sell lawnmowers. You'll make more money. <laughs> <laughs> and that may well have been true, but I, I don't think I've had better times than uh, working with young people in, in athletics. I know you have same, some same thoughts about that. Oh, they're great people. They're great people. But... Uh, Coaches and educators, they could be paid a lot more money for the time they spent with our kids and raising them and teaching them the values they do. Um, they, these are two of the best right here. Well, speaking of two of the best, in his 16th year as Coach Rogers here at Fort Laramie, and this team has really, really come along through the course of the season. They are now 16-5, and 11-1, and, and co-champions of the Shelby County Athletic League. We'll give you their tournament information in just a moment. Well, he's going to hit it up in the air, get it to Fulling Camp, and she rolls it across the net. That was Wendell, excuse me, Molly Wendell breaks the string. Boy, that's a pretty nice player when you can trust a freshman on the outside uh, hitting for your offense. There's me and Knee Camp to serve. And that will be an ace as she whacked it off the libero, Katie Luffman.
back to a three point lead. Sam Henry trying to rally here in the set. Good save. How about the play right there by Jenna Barhorse, John? That's the mark of a great setter when she can take an overpass and get to the net before the ball does and uh, one hand bring it back for a uh, kill for her team. And, and put it in a good spot for her, you know, her hitter to go up and put that one away. Here's Victoria Mesher. Fort Army needs two to win the first set. There's one of them with an ace. Ooh. Too late in the set to leave that ball uh, even come close. I'd rather play it out than let that ball drop in. Busher looked at it for a long time and thought it was going to go long, and it didn't. It died in front of her. Busher plays that one, however. Gels hits. Back set. And tip to the open area. The point will go to Katrina Burning, and our opening set will go to the Fort Army Redskins. 25-19, set two coming up after this. You watch High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at St. Henry High School. Opening set goes to the Fort Lauderdale Redskins 25-19. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Reese Myring Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. St. Henry was ahead 18-17 at one point. And uh, from there on, it became a this is the last uh, nine, seven out of nine points, six out of nine points went to, seven out of nine points, if I could add, went to Fort Laramie. And they will open up set two with Skyler Albers serving. Skyler had 37 aces during the course of the season so far. That was played by Jaden Rose and off a block at that point will go to Fort Laramie and they will continue the run that ended set one. Albers to serve again. Mark, so far I think you and I could even be spikers for uh, Fort Laramie the way Jenna Barhorse is putting the ball on a platter for him. And that will be an ace. Well, one of the highlights of my 2022 volleyball seasons when Diana Kramer let me come on the court down at New Bremen. She set me twice. I did get one of them across the net and in, so my kill ratio is 50%. That missed. I certainly wish I could have been there. I'd have taped well, that on my phone, and that would have been on a TikTok video, I think. She was extremely kind. She said she liked my approach and she liked my <laughs> jump. Well, my jump had disappeared like 50 plus years ago if I ever had one. Black. Knee camp hits it again, but Hoang's there. Joust at the net, and that goes the way of Ellie Fullenkamp, and we're tied at two. Jenna Barhorst in the front row being the setter. She used her left hand to uh, try to spike that ball on a little bit of an overpass. Here's Chloe Gells. And that time Barhorst couldn't get her feet set underneath her, and that was very difficult to try to play that ball, and got called for double contact. Ball was behind her. She had to spin around and turn and try to play the ball. And there's a typical set right there for Barhorse. And it went out. 4-2 St. Henry. Gells to serve again. Her 55 aces led St. Henry this year. And in it is. That kill goes to Mesher. Victoria put that one away. I think there are two. Paul Offenbacher called a net on that, so even though that's going to take that kill away. Back hit by Burning. That was played at the net. What's the call? Prolonged contact? Yes, it was. Mr. Cook's body is in front of me and his hand signals sometimes. Uh, was, that, was that a prolonged contact somebody called? Yes. Yeah, I thought it was. Knee camp. Big hit that time from Mia.
And the serve will be falling camp. Here's Ellie, six foot sophomore. And knee camp played off the net. Good play. Here's Poing. The knee camp again. Swirling pops it up in the air and then it's hit over by Mesher. Third time for knee camp. Hits it to Summer Hoying. Our longest point of today. That one was played by Fallen Camp. And knee camp again. This time she hits it long. Pass was a little, just a little off the net. Me and Knee Camp uh, didn't get her typical approach on that and just hit her a little long. Knee Camp just tips it that time. What a good play by the Libero that time, Luffman. And that's going to be a prolonged contact to Sesta Lauren Tiemann as ball is over her head. She tried to play it. Looked like my uh, Sunday afternoon volleyball, Chuck. And that will be an ace. Chalk that one up to Summer Hoy. Fort Loramie serving just a little bit tougher so far in this match than uh, the Redskins from St. Henry. Hoy with another serve here. She served the last two points. He can't goes cross court, but it's a two hoing. And then Katrina Burning. And we have a red skin in neck. The point was going to go to Ontrop. Victoria Mesher got a little tight in there and got caught up in the net. Whirling serves. Backs up that time. Whirling sets this one. Mesher hits. Ferrari wants a touch. Nobody has it. Point goes to St. Henry. Dennis Wendell and the people at St. Henry, they always get top quality line judges here to come here, so you can really uh, use them. Tied at seven. That ball was hit by Brandewe, poked over by Wendell, but it was outside the antenna, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Eight seven as Victoria Mesha will serve. No, she will not. She's going to be. Uh, Replaced by Miley Chateau will step in to serve this ball. Miley wears number 13. Rolling sets. Hit out of the middle by Albers. And that hit the antenna on the effort by Mia Nikamp. Mark, that's a tough job to do. Just come in cold off of the bench you're put in to serve for somebody that's already been serving, and you got to come in cold and try to keep the run rolling. Is this one of those things that coaches think about for the tournament? I got a designated server now. I can run in for those situations, get her some work here? Exactly. She see her, he or she sees them practicing every day. Three-point lead now for St. Henry. They have scored six out of the last of Fort Fort Lauderdale. They've scored six out of the last eight points as Molly Chateau heads to the lobby to pick up the loose ball. She could have picked up a bag of popcorn well, for us out there. And the kill out of the middle will go to my on trap. Takes the run, sends a serve back to St. Henry and to be a new camp. It all started with a great pass from Morgan Bomber in the back row to run that offense. He can't. Serve goes into the net. 11-8 in favor of 
for Larmy as that was Brianna Mangin checked in. She will play in the back row now for Neekamp. So he yells off a block, but it still fell in. Chloe is second on the team with 231 kills. That was a smart job by John Rogers having his server hit to the person that just came in, but she made a great pass. Got up high, didn't hit anything. Here's Gels again. And tip. Good play that time by Gels to get to it, and she just three balls it over. And on the slide, Skyler Albers gets the kill. Jenna Barhorst hasn't set to the same person two times in a row on any rally. That's uh, the sign of spreading the ball around, spread the wealth, keep everybody happy. And that kill goes to Wendell. Molly Wendell is a nice player. She's a tall girl for just a freshman. I don't have anything on our rosters here uh, as far as how tall Molly is. I but think she's 5'10". Okay, that's... She's got some growing to do yet for a freshman. Pick that up off of somebody else's roster. Way early in the year, ball's pushed wide. The lead is down to one for the Fort Army Redskins. Yeah. That was kind of an unforced error there. That was an easy just to push over, and she just pushed it out. Teeman will serve again. And Lauren Teeman chocks up an ace. She had 28 before today. Retired to 12. Just as I say, Fort Lorem is serving a little bit tougher. Uh, Lauren Teeman comes out and drills one right, and they pass it off the back wall. Teeman served. Albers hits out of the middle and scores. Just a casual observation, John, as we've done some volleyball across our viewing area. The teams across the southern part seem to go a little bit more risk-reward with their serves. and. Goes across the northern part a little bit more conservative with how they serve the ball. I talked to both coaches about that. There's another ace there. Um, serve tough, and they'll accept those uh, balls that go out of bounds and into the net as long as uh, it's a little bit above 50 50. They're going to take that risk reward. Here's Albers to serve again after chalking up that ace. She had 30 before today. Gels will get a dip. That was a great get by. Uh, Lydia Whirling. Skyler Albers dove to try to keep the ball in play. She could not. On the well-placed ball, Chloe Gells will serve with her team trailing by a point. Whirling will set in the middle. Mesher wanted to tip it, but it's blocked. I think Whirling got the block. Yes, she did. That ball was a little set a little tight, and uh, they just tried to tip it over, and it was put right back to them. Balled over. We can't balls hit. And a tip at the net by Fuller Camp. That falls on the Fort Army side. And so Henry's back ahead. There's Gells to serve again. She served the last two points for you. So Henry. Overpass. Oh, good play by Barhorst. And now sets this one. And it's blocked into the antenna. Boy, that was a nice play starting off with that block. Led to uh, St. Henry hitting the ball off of uh, the block off on the pin. Point Fort Loramie Redskins. He camp. And Mia gets a point. For her team at 16 15 St. Henry. We played 31 points without a timeout here in set two. Mia Niekamp has really come on. She We had her early Agreed. in the season, and uh, now she's leading the team in hitting, and uh, she's uh, really pushing forward in her senior year. Here's Ellie Fullenkamp. And she gets an ace. 
A little bit more communication needed on the back line there for the Fort Laramie Redskins. With all that, we have played 32 points. 17 of them have gone to St. Henry, and that means a Fort Laramie timeout. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. TV44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, and WSN is a part of that celebration. Did you donate $40 as a thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in this region? Donate online at WTLW.com backslash donate or call 419-339-4444. Seventeen fifteen, St. Henry here in set number two. And back to serve once more is Ellie Follenkamp. She has 15 aces this season. And that one left him up short in the net. Timeout work. Makes the coaches look like a genius. Here's Summer Hoying. 222 kills this year for the sophomore. To lead Coach Rogers' team. And... Well, somebody went harder than the bleachers. Who... Uh, that was Lauren Teeman that went in there. Okay, I had the uh, bodies in my way. Lauren's okay, a bit of a smile on her face. We're tied at 17. She had some of her teammates over there padding the fall for her. That goes long, 18-17. That's how you know if your teammates like you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not our favorite. What's such a splat into the bleachers over there? Oh boy. <laughs> Here's Whirling. <laughs> Good serve. Bar horse sets. Mesher tip. Busher sets the camp and she hits a right to Hoying. And that then was... off a blocker by Brandy for a point. Go ahead, John. Hoying had a nice dig on that there. That ball was great base position by Summer. And uh, when the ball was spiked really hard, she was in the place to play it. This is Victoria Mesher. Tipped into the middle of the floor by Ontrop. And now the hit by Brandewee. Nikam. Powered off a of bar horse. Barhorse couldn't quite play that one, though, and Maya Ontrop's hit. A little shell-shocked right there. Boy, she took a lot of, <laughs> a lot of hard uh, incomings there on that one. She's a player, though. Absolutely. <laughs> nice job by Maya again. 2018, she drops the serve in. 22 aces before today did me and E-Camp. Here's our another one. And that one go. That will also be an ace. 21-18. Mark, I got to apologize to Mia. I started calling her Maya. Between yeah. Maya Busher, or Raya Busher, and Maya Ontrop, and then me and E-Camp, I kind of get them mixed up. Pretty easy thing to do. Here's Mia. Popped up in the air. Albers hits. Put it out of bounds, 22-18. This set going the way of the home team. We're going to get a timeout right here as St. Henry has taken a four-point lead. Fort Army won the opening set by six. He didn't think we were going to get out of here uh, in just three easy ones, did you? I was hoping not. <laughs> I, oh, I know. We get paid to do this and watch volleyball of this caliber. This is a great thing to do. You can check out our website, SWSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anywhere else in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Mark, and talking to the coaches here a little bit before there, we talked a little bit about our tournament time, and uh, I talked to John Rogers whether uh, he was being the number one seed, whether he wanted to uh, take a bye or whether he wanted to play. and. He said his team just wants to play, so we'll get out. And uh, we took a game in the first round, and uh, we'll just go from there. We're St. Henry and Tricia Rosenbeck. 
they decided uh, to go the other route from uh, the Coldwater Cavaliers and the Ottawa Glandorf Titans, so they went to the bottom bracket there for the bye. We will talk about the tournament draw before we wrap this up today. We'll try to get that in. Have a timeout or something. That ball is hit by Brandewee. This will be hit by Wendell. And then to the middle of the floor for a point for Katrina Burning to break the run. 22-19. Katrina gets to serve. She has three aces. Or excuse me, 17 aces. She had three in their win this past week over Bruschi in the, uh, the championship match, or one that tied the Lutheran League championship anyway. That's blocked at that point. Avery Brandewee. 22-20. Burning the serve again. Angie played that one. Gels through a block, but the block went out of bounds. It's 23-20 home team. Jade Rose will enter to play in the back row after Katrina Burning has finished her service. Busher serves. And Luffman's going to have to bump it over. That was blocked. Let's give that point to Ellie, Ellie Follenkamp. And we're at set point here in set number two. Jenna Barhorst led Skylar Albers in to right into that block that time. So that was a good job by the St. Henry Redskins. And an ace to wrap it up. Set two goes to St. Henry, 25, 20, set three. Coming up after this, you're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Reese Myring and Company CPA, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Each team has won a set. Fort Army is 25-19, St. Henry 25-20, and we are headed to set three here. Mark Schein and uh, John Dornick. I see more popcorn coming in, John. We missed miss lunch. <laughs> uh, we're in good shape here. You know, looking at these uh, rosters here, there, you know, a lot of things. Skylar Albers, a junior. Avery Brandy, a junior. Jenna, or Avery Brandy, a sophomore. Jenna Barhorst, a sophomore. Summer Hoying, a junior. Hallie Grillo is a junior. So uh, Loramie's got a lot of people coming back next year. And the same thing with uh, Raya Busher. She's a sophomore. Chloe Gels is just a junior. Um, they will lose their setter, but um, or no, Lydia Whirling is a junior. Mia Niekamp, who's come on so strong here. She's a senior and she'll graduate. She's got a nice senior year. And Lizzie Snyder, who was starting earlier in the season, and now is uh, back as a junior. So things look good for both squads here for the following years. That they do. Each team has two seniors who uh, play a lot. There's actually well, a third senior for Fort Laramie, and her name is Emma Canty, and she's actually a foreign exchange student as Skyler Albers gets a block to start out for Fort Laramie. Emma Conti is a foreign exchange student from Italy, technically a senior. So there are three seniors on the roster. That is somebody I'd like to interview sometime. I'd like to know her thoughts about high school volleyball here in the United States and what she's done academically and socially. And rattles around the ceiling off the light. And that's an ace for a point. Italy has a very good international uh, volleyball, so I imagine the program, the training that goes on yeah. over there is quite well, so. Skyler Albers to serve again. The juniors that John mentioned a moment ago. The ball was pushed across by Fallen Camp. This will be Hoying, and she's going to free ball it over. Put out of the middle by Knee Camp for a point. Nice job. Keep it out of the middle. Take it over there. Make the setter play that ball before she uh, on the first contact instead of letting her set the ball. Here's Ellie Fallen Camp. Summer Hoying. Wow. Put sure. the ball on a platter for Summer Hoying. Got a good pass, got a good set, and then she went right down the line and put that one away. Here's the setter, Jenna Barhorst. Yeah. 
tipped by on top. Boy, gets it cross court. And then knee camp right to the middle of the floor and down. Mia did another one. That's a great. She had 257 coming in, and I'm sure she's had quite a few today. So uh, that's adding to her total legal or team leading total. She had 22 in their win they had this week. It's the Parkway. Another ace. We'll chalk that up, and we're tied at three. Good service this time by Lydia Whirling. Risk reward there. That serve was a bullet for an ace. Float serve this time just gets it over the net. Hoy got that one. Here's Whirling. That's blocked by Mesher and Hoy. They go try to get knee camp, and she goes right to the middle of the floor again. Hit it right past Mesher and Burning. Mark, when they spread that ball out, it gets the defense uh, out of uh, whack just a little bit. Not everybody got back to base spots there. Good serve right there. Mesher and bangs it off the libero, off the net first and off the libero. Busher, we're tied at four. Victoria Mesher, another one a sophomore that's getting a lot of play in time for John Rogers uh, Redskins. You said these two teams played at the end of the season for the first time last year. Is that correct? Well, and they, that's what Coach Rosenbeck said. Both like it. Get one big test in before you get into the tournament. And the miss. It did. The hit was by Wendell. I'm waiting for the official's call to make sure nobody touched it. Summer Hoying again. Good serve. Just tipped to the middle of the floor that time. Good play by Barhorst to keep it alive, and then her team bangs it over. Knee camp again. This time she winds up and puts full force behind it. Well, this is fun watching volleyball here, Mark. Uh, that was a great defensive series by Fort Loramie Redskins, and uh, then an equally good series by uh, the St. Henry Redskins to put the ball away for a point. Here's me a knee camp to serve. Chloe Gells has entered to play in the front row. And that rolls across the net and down. Me and Ecamp had 22 aces through the first 21 matches. Just chalked another one up right there for her. She serves again. Back set Mesher. Wow, that ball come out with no spin at all. That was just a beautiful set. Two of the better ones around. Like every team in the MAC seems to have a wonderful setter, don't they? And some of them have two. <laughs> yes, they do. And my recollection of the ones we've seen this year, many of them are young players. Ontrop pushes it over through the block with 7 6 now, St. Henry. It seems like every time we're down here in uh, Shelby County Athletic League, Mercer County, this whole area down here, the setters are very talented, but also very young. They get a lot of good training. Uh, kind of a miss hit by Brandon. He still gets a point out of it. Coach Rogers kind of smiles at her. I think he's scratching his head thinking, <laughs> I didn't teach that. He'll take the point, though, as we're tied at seven as Katrina Burning serves. One of his two seniors that get a lot of playing time. We can't pick that one. And what do we got? Double contact. Double contact. Eight, Mark, seven. these setters are so good that uh, when they make just a little mistake, it uh, looks obvious. Warren Tiemann comes in to serve this ball. So Gels takes a seat. They're on kind of a back row, front row rotation. Those two are. Good play by Busher, diving to get that block picked up. And then Gels goes cross court. That was a good play by Mesher. Free ball over. And Gels goes off a blocker, but we have a black shirt in the net. It was number seven, Jenna Barhorst. Jenna's an active player, both uh, when she's setting the ball and blocking the ball at the net. 
Good serve, but it's played in the front row. Played in the back row, I should say, by Rose. And they keep that one alive. And Worley just dumps it over. <laughs> Boy, I like oh. those centers who can do that. Catch everybody by surprise and use that left hand. I think mom and dad have been both nice to him at Christmas and got him a left hand early when they were young girls. Ball's hit, played by Manson in the back row. Really played that one, and then Manson sets. Tough angle, but a good play by Brandewee. And Gells just tips it and gets a point. That's 11 7 now, St. Henry. Lauren Teeman got him going on a small run here. Let's see if she can keep it going. Point gets to the back row where Manjin has to play it. Gels, and that was blocked. Skyler Albers, As Jenna Barhorst yep. up there for a composite block there. Oh, I like that term composite. I like that. <laughs> Gels, that time she hits it through the block. Right past it, and Avery Brandaway couldn't play it in the back row. On the power shot by Gels. He's totally to serve. It's amazing how many times the girls get a nice uh, attack and then have to go back and serve, too. Just a little reward. And she gets an ace. And that will be a Fort Lauderdale timeout. They're going to break also here in set three. It's 13 8 St. Henry. You're watching high school volleyball on WOSN. Six out of the last seven points have been scored by the St. Henry Redskins. They've taken a five-point lead. Fort Laramie has taken their first time out in set three, and there's your center. Jenna Barhorst just goes up and whacked that one straight down. She had 60 kills from her center position when we entered today's match. Left-hander again. That's Tough if you're a blocker to go up there when she takes both hands up and just drops the right hand and lays the ball down with her left. Knee cam powers it through, and she's going to joust at the net. Bumped over that time. And blocked, but blocked out of bounds by Falling Cam. You know, Mark, it's nice watching uh, Jenna Barhorst when she's in the front row. She goes, she recognizes the overpass and goes immediately into her blocking mode. You said, Henry, you're going, you're supposed to set that second ball, not hit it over. Did Willing save that? Well, she oh. saved it. And saved our R1, Dan Cook, too. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, St. Henry's seeing three straight points after the timeout. Go to Fort Laramie. They take a timeout. Let's talk tournament volleyball a little bit and to talk about where each of these two teams are headed. St. Henry is in uh, Division Three, and that is the Kaleida Division three on the 17th of October, the number six seed Allen East will play the number 10 seed Paulding. That will be at Allen East. And on the 19th, the winner will then go to St. Henry to play in the sectional championship match. That match uh, will lead to the district play at Kaleida, which is on October 24 and October 26th. St. Henry's played 15 times in the state tournament, won it seven times. How about that? <laughs> Fort Army, on the other hand, they're in the Southwest District. They're in Ashley, the Southwest District number two. As John said earlier, they have chosen to play. They will open up on the 18th of October at home with number 22, Bradford. Then on the 22nd, they will get the 21st seed, Troy Christian. And their districts are on October 24 and October 29. They played the state tournament twice and won it in 2014. And coming out of a timeout, you go to me and E-Camp, and she gets you a point. That's always good when you've got that big hitter on the left side all the time that you can go to. And after coming out of the timeout, I'm sure Coach Rosenbeck said, feed the ball to the, the big horse and let her put it away. Ellie Fullenkamp serves. Mesher hits it through the block. Antrop was there, so was Whirling. 
At that point, we'll go to Fort Laramie, and it's 14-12. Victoria Mesher did a nice job of staying behind the ball. Uh, Jenna Barhorst led her right to the net, stayed behind the ball for a good, solid point. And that time, Whirling wins a joust at the net. Point goes to St. Henry. You know, sometimes even that smaller setter can win that joust. She knows the ball's overpass. She goes up for the block sooner than uh, the middle blocker realizes it's going to be an overpass. And Willing will serve that one for an ace. So Olivia Willing kind of showing her stuff right here. She had 39 aces in the first 21 matches. It's a good thing those back walls are made of concrete there. Some of these balls have been shanked on both ends. Willing again, and hard serve that time. And that ball is put away by Hoyne. Boy, Hoyne's got a nice swing, 222 kills coming in there, and she's added plenty to her total today. Good all-around player, Summer Hoyne. 221 kills, 41 aces, at 15 assists, and 133 digs coming into today's 22nd match. That was hit by Wendell, and then free ball over. Whirling sets, and just tipped over that time by Brandaway. Back set. Whirling will play this one to Burning, and Busher will set, but overpassed it. That was a tough pass for the Libra to make running away from uh, the place she was going to set the ball. Might choose to set it to a different location next time. That kill goes to on top. Off the top of the tape, over the block, and down to the floor. 17-14 with me and Ecamp to serve. So Henry leads for Coach Rosenbeck. Block. Nice block. Is that on top, I believe. Back to back points for her. We talk about coaches teaching technique. That was a perfect technique. Go up, turn your hands in, force the ball into the center of the floor. That she did. Four point lead for her team. And now five off the ace. So Henry led 13 to eight. That's been their biggest lead. So this. Five-point margin right here ties that. Here's Neekamp again. How about the save that time by <laughs> your setter, Jenna Barhorst? Strong overpass going in there. The setter comes in one-handed and still gets the ball up into a location where the hitter can put it on the floor. Beautiful job. This is Miley Chateau to serve. She did this in the second set as well. And Kells just clobbered the ball, and Summer Hoyne couldn't play it. 2015. Hardest swing of the day for Chloe Gells? Boy, yes, it was. I saw her. She rolled that thumb down, put the ball cross court well, and put it on the floor right in front of. Uh... Rolling sets, and Katrina Burning hits that one and puts it away. That might have been her best swing of today. 2016 as Katrina Burning gets to serve. Boy, Mark, there's a lot of talent out here on the floor oh, today. Come on. Set. Hit by Fullenkamp. Albers hits that one. And then Gell's off a of blocker and she gets another point. 21-16. Jade Rose will enter the play in the back row. A lot and of touches at the net here tonight, Mark. There are. And Lauren Tiemann gets to serve. Ace for Lauren. Timeout. This one will go to Coach Rogers and company as his team trails by six here in this set. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you.
Now's a great time to make a donation any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day, and you can visit WTLW.com. I looked at the WOSN broadcast schedule for upcoming week. We're going to be doing some sectional soccer this week. But the week after, when volleyball gets to the district, we will have matches that will be played Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And will be aired on Tuesday through Friday of the week of district. So go to our website and check out where we will be that week of districts for volleyball. And, of course, next weekend we'll be doing conference championship games and playoff contention games in football, too. So big week coming up in high school sports for WSN. WOSN's app on the phone is uh, keeping me uh, in, in the know on the scores for all the sports. Here's Lauren Tiemann. And it fell in. Ace for Lauren. Kind of a knuckleball type action that just died on the back line. Lauren right. had, go ahead, John. That little jump float serve comes over there with no spin, and it looks like it's going out, and it just drops down like a knuckleball. Lauren had 28 aces before today's action, so he's added to that total. In the middle, the set goes to, and what? Got a black shirt in the net. Set point coming up. St. Henry here in set three as team is going to try to serve out the set. Avery Brand, we got a little uh, strong at the net. And that ace will wrap up set number three. That one will go to St. Henry, as did set two. Fort Lombie set one. Let's come back after this. We'll have set four coming up. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsors Reese Myrick and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their future financial needs, and we appreciate their support today. John, it seems as though St. Henry served the ball extremely well. Got a lot of aces there in set number three. I think you hit the point right on the head, Mark, there. That was the difference in uh, set three, the difference in the serving. See if uh, Fort Laramie has a uh, rebound in them here. They won the opening set 25-19. They've lost 25-20 and 25-16 here in sets two and three. And what are we doing? Still getting lineup set, are we? Yeah. Our R2, Mr. Offenbacher in charge of that. Boy, John, the number of people go, you know what, that R2's job, yeah, he's just kind of over there watching the match. He really has so many duties and responsibilities <laughs> to kind of go unnoticed. You know, I always tell my officials, you can control the match as good as the R in, at the R2 position as you can at the R1. Here's Skyler Albers to serve. Chloe Gells hits out of the middle and scores. Mark, yeah. They moved that uh, attack inside just a little bit. Instead of all the way out to the pin, they brought it in a little bit and it kind of forced the blockers to kind of question where they were supposed to be there. Well, we got you here, John. I had a man ask me this week, I would like to start officiating volleyball. My daughter is graduating. What do I do? And I, I think you know a lot about how to get into that particular thing as we had tied it up at one. How would I get into officiating if I wanted to? Go on to the OHSAA uh, dot org website and go to the officiating column and it will lead you right through it classes are usually online the kneecap rolled that one to the middle of the floor so is going to tip kneecap played it and they couldn't quite get it over kneecap falling camp in the third shot wouldn't go over so for army takes a 2-1 lead just couldn't get enough underhand punch underneath it to get it over the net that time. Ace chopped that one up. I've told some young people you're going to go off to college. Well, what do you want to do, deliver pizzas on Friday night or be around a high school athletic contest, be it football, basketball, volleyball, whatever. Get your license and enjoy that. Yet another ace. Wow. Whatever, whatever Coach Rogers said yeah. to him, uh, he ought to put that in a bottle and sell it down there at the neighborhood grocery store. Janet Barhorst has served three of these points in this four-point run, and now another one. 
She led this team in aces before today, or actually was tied with Summer Hoying, and she is having a wonderful service run right here in front of our cameraman, Jacob O'Neill. So, knee camp hits, and she gets a point. Hallie Grillo tried to get a hand on it, but could keep it in play. And the run is broken at five. Kelly Fullercamp will serve. Back set. And a little bit of an off balance swing, and I think Niekamp was able to put it away. Mark, talking to Coach uh, Rosenbeck here, uh, Ellie Fullencamp has played so well just coming on in the season. She's really played her way into the lineup. Served that ball. Barthor sets. The ball was played in the back row by Bomber, and it's just kind of bumped over by Tiemann. This will be Niekamp. Oh, whoa, look out. Me and Niekamp put that ball down hard. I, I, without talking with her or whatever, it seems like she is so much more confident in coming off that knee injury. She goes up and hits the ball with a lot more authority than when we saw them earlier in the year. And she just played that ball right there. The ball will be set to the back row to Bomber, and Bomber missed the back line. They're tied at five. Katie Luthman for uh, Fort Loramie there just made a really nice pass on a terrific serve. And uh, that's what caused the offense to uh, start out in a good position. Here's Summer Hoying to serve. Got another good day for Summer on the volleyball court. Knee camp hits. Wow, she's having a nice she match is. today. Yeah. John, it gets to about this point of the year, the, the conferences have wrapped up their league titles and so on. You start thinking about who are the all-league players? Well, we've seen a lot of the MAC schools this year, and only a few of the Shelby County League, but uh, name 10 players in the MAC and, and limit it to that. There's a whole bunch of girls that could be all-league players in that, in that conference will be second team, and anywhere else will be first team or, or better. If you get your name mentioned in the MAC, uh, you're a pretty good volleyball player. The Shelby County League is it's, coming on it strong really has. also. Yes. Rushi, Jackson Center, Anna, that whole crew. The ball's hit to Busher. Raya did a nice job getting that ball up. Oh, and it hit the ceiling up, got up to the vent up above and couldn't get to it to play it. Yeah, yeah. doing a little quick math. The uh, MAC won 70%, actually 70.1% of its non conference matches. Eight of the 10 schools had winning records in non-conference action. And if you take just the top six teams, that one's going to fall. Played. Burning hits it across. And an on trop hits. Good play by Hoyne to keep it alive. Off a block. That point scores to St. Henry. This 9-5 to continue that thought. If you take the top six teams in the MAC this year, they won 86% of their non-conference matches, and sometimes they're playing each other on Saturdays or whatever in tournaments or uh, try matches and so on. So they've had a yet another wonderful year for MAC volleyball. And the ball through the block is Katrina Burning. Comes Skyler Albers in. Well, Ellen Frilling is back to serve. Was the junior. You can't have got it going again. Somewhere along the line, my scoreboard and the one here disagreed. So I made an error somewhere on my score sheet. It is now 9-7. Oh, maybe. Scoreboard's got wonky on us. And that hit doesn't fall that time for Molly Wendell. 
the scoreboard each end. Now they're in sync. They're both saying nine eight now. It went from four to seven <laughs> yeah. to eight. You know. Well, it was but, an eighty six at a JV match one time. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a Kino board uh, on the <laughs> other times. <laughs> That's an eight. Chalk that one up, and uh, we're going to be tied at nine. Good ace by Katrina Burning. 17 of those in the first 21 matches for her. Gels hits point play that one. So did Burning. It goes over. And then Gels hits that one to Hoying. That one's dumped over to the middle of the floor. Busher sets. And what a hit by that time by Albert. Just curled it right down the net. Oh, Skyler Albers, Jenna Barhorst were working very well together on that with the block and then coming out into the offense. That had some overspin on it as Avery Brandewee, a curveball coming down the line there. Brandewee fixed her shoe, and there's a block. Good job, Avery Brandewee. Get that shoe tied properly and get a block at the net. 11-9. Salami trying to even them sets at two and set it to a fifth set. And they sell help because five consecutive points for the home team or for the visiting team. And a St. Henry timeout. It's 12-9 for Army in set four. You're watching high school volleyball on WOSN. The free WSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WSN. You can search the WSN in the App Store or the Android Play Store. Chloe Gels hits that one and coming out of the timeout, she scores a point. Good timeout, breaks the run. It's 12-10. Reading Katrina Burning's lips uh, coming out of there, she slid on the floor and she said, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> wow. It's like wow. we had both Wendell and Fallen Camp there. One of them turned it back. It's just hard to believe that Molly uh, Wendell hasn't been playing as much and has come on the way she has in the course of the year. Oh, Wendell, a 5'10 freshman. There's an ace. Give that one to Busher. She had 21 before today. We're tied at 12. Good timeout by Coach Rosenbeck. Just goes to show you, Mark, you got to stay ready because you never know when that person in front of you might, something might happen. And that hit the antenna. goes out. 13-12 Fort Lauderdale. Here's Avery Brand, do we deserve? And they slavery. 14 12. You know, we talk about both these teams serving strong. St. Henry had 209 total aces uh, coming into the game, and Fort Laramie, 217. And they've both had a, quite a bunch today. Gallows tips to the middle of the floor. And they're able to keep it alive with Brandewee's free ball. And it goes out of bounds. Good eyes over there by Gels to not play the ball. I think she had a little help by uh, Raya Busher there playing him back over. Was on the line right in her base position like she should have been and yelling out, out, out. Well, I, I might well have been her because through my headsets, I heard somebody yelling out. <laughs> So that's we're all the way on the other side of the floor and up about eight rows. And cuts or not. The hit was by Hoying, and we're going to say no touch, so we're tied at 14. Lauren Tiemann back to serve. 15-14 Fort Lauderdale. Skyler Albers will serve this ball. Just a junior. Albers. 
tip with by Fallen Camp. Hoying will hit this ball and it's blocked, but played in the front row by Frilling. Hoying again and blocked again. Good play by Jaden Rose to keep it alive. And Gells pounds it away. Well, John, in one of the more serious misprints of the day, on my roster sheet today, I put Chloe Gells down as being a 5'4 junior. Well, I don't think Chloe is 5'4. <laughs> I used to be 5'10", but I think I'm 5'8 <laughs> right now, so maybe that happened to you on my score sheet, too. We're going to get a little bit of a break while Summer Hoying ties her shoe and Chloe Gell serves. Overpass, and Kneecap says thank you. 16-15. Jenna Barhorst went up to block that. Mia Kneecap took that ball inside of her for a good shot. And good timing to wait till the ball got in over the plane of the net so she could legally play it, too. This is going to be bumped over by Rose. Here's Kneecamp in the middle again. Oh, boy. Look out. Me and Kneecamp came to play today. Dallas Wendell here, the AD, may have to fix some potholes in the floor after the day. <laughs> uh, the extra bucket of epoxy. <laughs> Ace, Chloe Gells chops one up. It's 18-15. And we're going to get a John Rogers timeout. Each team has used a timeout here in set number four. Boy, she just, the D-camp is just really, uh, her strength, and of course the sets have been outstanding as, as from Whirling, too. It's, it's amazing. Both of these setters are just outstanding and so if you've got a couple of good hitters and you move the ball around it makes the offense a lot more potent it all starts with the pass though you know if you get that pass from the back row making that uh, so you can run all three aspects of your offense uh, it helps out so uh, both teams have good passers in the back um, they've got defensive specialists that come in that's what they do they know their job well and they're doing it well and the setters are dishing the ball out uh, Molly Wendell's hitting off the opposite side of the floor. Uh, Mia Niekamp's hitting both middle and outside. Chloe Gels is hitting outside. Um, Summer Hoying for uh, Fort Loramie, she's hitting the ball. Um, Skyler Albers in the middle. Um, we've got, you know, uh, Victoria Mesher's got some out of the middle. So we're, we're moving the ball all around. A lot of good plays. Here's Gels to serve. Her team's up three. Here in uh, set number four. And that's just dumped over. What a nice play by the center whirling just to pick an opportunity to score a point. It's not fair. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to set. <laughs> I'm going to go block, and instead you're getting a point out of it. Nice play by her. Disguised it well. Gell's almost an ace. That's blocked, but it's blocked out of bounds. Nikans took thrilling shot and blocked it out of bounds. 19-16. Block kind of just followed her outside and instead of turning her hands in with following her outside, just took the blocker and off right out, out of bounds for a point for the Redskins. Firehorse gets an ace. We are seeing two excellent setters here today, and Firehorse has served very, very well, showing you why she and Summer Hoang lead Fort Army in aces this year. Almost another one there, but a good play by Bomber. And then that's a point. Was that Fullenkamp? I had a body in my way. Yeah, I think that was Ellie uh, Fullenkamp. I thought it was. She gets the kill, gets to serve. Well, I like that. R1. Dan Cook would have turned sideways. I might have had a chance to see who hit that one. Then she rolls the one over. Hits the tape and rolls it across. 21-14. Tough to see that happen this late in the set. Chalk up another one as the libero Ruffman had to dive for it. And that makes it 22-17. Just finding open areas with that serve. Boy, Ellie Fullenkamp isn't even one of the top four on the team, and she's had quite a few today. She had 15 in their first uh, 21 matches. And that point's going to go to Katrina Burning. They stopped the run by St. Henry. It's 22-18. 
Mark, both these teams have middles that can hit off a of one foot. Uh, and uh, anybody that doesn't know what that means, that's coming. They just go behind the setter and kind of run and jump off a of one foot. Back set on trap, and she hits it. Oh, good play by Worley to keep it alive, by Barhorst to keep it alive. And then Niekamp puts it away. Wow. Barhorst played really, really well right there. We're going to bring in uh, Molly Wendell to play in the front row, and Lauren Tiemann sits down. Go ahead, John. Laura played nice in the back row. Now she gets out, and we'll bring Molly Wendell back in. Ace. That oh, puts St. Henry one point away from taking a four-set match today. Got to play that ball. That was a good serve, though. Nice jump float. Set point, match point for Lydia Whirling. Float serve. Set. Whirling well, got to that one and kept it alive. And then the ball goes into the net, and Fort Army stays in the match with Ellen Frilling to serve. It was a nice serve. Busher will set, and Niekamp hits and got it in. Curled the ball around and got it to fall inside the back corner. And set number four will go to St. Henry. And they will take that one at a 25-19 match here in set four. What a wonderful match, Mark. Both teams played their hearts out today. They're looking forward to going into the tournament. Both of them, uh, no matter whether each one of the Redskins are playing well. That they are. Fort Laramie and John Rogers' team, they will finish up the regular season at 17-5. and five. And as we said earlier, they will be co-champions in the SCAL with 11-1 record. And their tournament match will be on October 18th against Bradford. So, Henry, they go to 17 and 5. They are 14 and 3 since early on in September. They've won eight out of their last nine on a six game winning streak. And they will be 17 and 5. They will wait until Allen East and Paulding play. And then they will match up on the 19th here against the winner of Allen East and Paulding. Good match, well played, well officiated, and a good way to spend a Saturday, John. Oh, it can't be, it can't get any better than this. I'm telling you what, they're paying me to do this, <laughs> watching such great volleyball, seeing good friends, and uh, always nice working with you, Mark. Well, we were going to try to snag an interview with a St. Henry player, and they disappeared the locker room really fast. <laughs> so we're not going to be able to do that today. Instead, we'll wrap it up right here, and we'll try to catch somebody from the uh, Redskins as we head into the tournament. We appreciate you watching today. St. Henry over Fort Laramie in four sets, three to one. You've been watching High School Volleyball on WOSN.